Those are the three X's. Hey, man. Those are the three X's and the only X's. Once the trap has been engaged, there's no other way out. And every artist that fits that description, hey, man, listen. Please don't make me get the fuck up. Matter of fact, go, go get in the bed. Go get in the bed. Get in the bed now. Go in there now. Try to let you be outside. So... Podcast. I am A.O. Conseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation, and this is <laughs> Still coughing. If you do not have your Are You Serious t-shirt, go right here. Um, make sure you include your size, color, and address in the PayPal note. For some reason, I didn't have about like the last. Sock, I'm telling you, bitch. Walking like you ain't got no goddamn sense. Uh, last five fucking orders, motherfucker just been sending money, ain't said a goddamn word. The fuck, how the fuck I'm posting over the sending shit? It's a PayPal note. Like, you send it in a note. Like, you say, do you want to. Send a comment with your money and shit like that. Like, shit is easy to see, whatever. But, um, yeah, get your shirt and shit like that. If you do not have your shirt at this point in time, I don't know what the fuck you got going on. Get your shit together, be on, or big bitch. Um, if you're new to the channel, um, get your shit together, too. Um, this ain't no funny time right now. Uh, before we get started, there will be a what you say episode about young greatness on the big homes network if you haven't subscribed to the big home network yet the link for that channel when y'all fought it and y'all been fighting for a little while now i can stop that farting dog come on dog um if you haven't gone over there go over there whatever like that we got interviews over there shout out to pirates endo uh we got part one of her interview over that motherfucker. We got what you say, the series why I go over what motherfuckers actually say in a song and why the fuck it don't make sense or why the fuck it do make sense. We just break down the fucking words and see if it's really like that. Uh, also, we have a show called In Hindsight where we go over just shit that I find on social media, online and shit like that. It Like domestic violence disputes. You know, live, um, and we dissect the shit and see if we can't use it as a learning tool for us. See, last night I said the best way to promote a failing artist, well, not even a failing artist, if you're an artist who just wants to get over that hump, trying to get that big sale or whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying, this is the way you do it. And it's not a one-time thing. An uh, artist like Young Greatness, I'm talking about business right now, because it's finna get real messy. Uh, as far as if his mama didn't have um, the, um, what was that, um, power of attorney, um, if Young Greatness didn't have his insurance together, his will together, um, it really... None of that shit will matter if he had a fucked up deal. He will sign with cash money. Uh, BT Youngin signed with cash money. The boy Jordan Tower pointed that shit out. Um, that's the cash money curse. I need to talk about that shit. But this video right here. I want to talk about the rap trap. I want to talk about. Why it's good that rappers are dying getting shot and I want to talk about what you may be able to do 
to keep this from happening to you. Let's first start with the wrap trap. Okay, so the wrap trap um, only works on black men. Um, the wrap trap was invented um, before the 360 deal. Um, it's a trap with three exits. It's a trap with three exits. Um, the first exit would be jail. Second exit is hell. Third exit is poverty. Um, as a gritty street artist claiming to be a real street nigga, which street nigga is not a real term. It's just bullshit because we can't quantify what a street nigga is. Um, there are no requirements. You don't have to have this many bodies. You don't have to be and got in this many fights. You don't have to be and sold this much coke. You don't have to be and sold this much weed. There, you don't have to be and had this many guns. These type of guns that there are no requirements. So you, there's no standard of what a street nigga is. You can really be a smoker, a career smoker, and you can call yourself a real street nigga because you've been in the street. A artist who's building his persona and his buzz off of being enemy with police officers and the niggas that are around him. That is black man building a persona around being a quote unquote street nigga, which means you don't like the police, the police don't like you, you don't like niggas, niggas don't like you. That is the basis. Those are the requirements to be a candidate to be put in the rap trap. After that, the only thing is for the devil to come down and put the curse on top of your head. The curse is success. Success to a street nigga is pretty much like putting a fucking bullseye on your back. Except it's a bullseye for everybody. It's, you have no friends at that point. Everyone from that point forward is trying to get something from you, whether it be your freedom, your life, or your money. Everybody wants something. So as soon as they put that curse of success on you, after being deemed a street nigga, that's the end of you. That's the end. Um... So bam, now you're successful. The, the the label come down, which is the devil. The the uh they come down and to niggas, to us, niggas in the streets, where we come from, five thousand dollars is looked at like success. If a motherfucker win a scratch off of five thousand dollars, your grandkids will ask people what, what my granddaddy did. Oh, your granddad? Oh, shit, that motherfucker won that money. So did. That motherfucker been had that money. I remember that motherfucker when he first won that money. All the, ooh, ooh. That's money. Like, that's success to us. You know what I'm saying? But what success comes with, what we know, is enemies. Not just jealousy. It comes with enemies. Because at that point, you're looked at as better than. And one thing you don't want to be in a room full of have-nots is better than. So, from there, they put the curse on you after they vetted you. Understand, they, they vet you for this. They have to make sure that you have no type of consciousness, meaning you don't want to, you, you're not for the betterment of your people. You're not for the mental liberation of your people. You're not for, for uplifting anyone. You're all about you. You can't see past tomorrow. Deaf, dumb, and blind. And these things work. You, you can't be a high school graduate. These are all fucking requirements that you have to have before they give you success. Because they have to know that you're not going to enable or help anyone with the success. It's supposed to be a curse, not a blessing. If you go get your mama a house and everything like that, they're going to get all that back just as soon as they done with you. As soon as you die, it's going right the fuck back because your mother doesn't know how to um, budget with money. They bring people straight the fuck out 
of ignorance, stupidity. No one would have mind. No one would have mind. So they give you the success. Now, giving you the success means now you have to protect said success from the niggas that you're talking about. And the thing that they do to make sure that them niggas is coming for you full of speed is they amplify what the fuck you've been saying this whole time. So all that little bullshit, that fuck nigga, kill a nigga around the corner because of fuck nigga, no side run the other side, fuck them niggas. They amplified. So now you were just talking to maybe 30 folks. Now you're talking to 3 million people. It's all on the radio. So now these, you know how niggas is. A nigga can get in a fight with his homeboy as long as it's just them around. It's all love. They'll be friends in five minutes. You put one bitch in the mix, them niggas will kill each other on the spot. So imagine what'll happen when 30 million fucking folks hear what the fuck this nigga been saying about these niggas. These niggas is coming full speed and the rapper in question knows this. The rapper then arms himself. How can you arm yourself when you've made sure that you're actually about what it is you've been talking about? You're already on probation. You're already a felon. We made sure of it. So now all the police got to do is come. All they got to do is come now because you're going to have to have some type of protection on you. So the police come. They find the gun. Run it back. The niggas come. They kill you. You say, fuck it, throw your hands up. I ain't no street nigga. I'm just going to make good music. You get kicked right the fuck back to poverty. So you got three exits in this trap. Jail, hell, poverty. Once this... <coughs> Who that? <coughs> Who that? <coughs> Why? That's the phone, y'all. That's the phone. That's the phone. Why? Chill out. That's the phone. It's the phone. I said it's the phone. Shut that shit up. Shut it up. I'm ready for him. I'm waiting on him. Those are the three X's. Hey, man. Those are the three exits, and the only exits. Once the trap has been engaged, there's no other way out. And every artist that fits that description, hey man, listen, please don't make me get the fuck up. Matter of fact, go, go get in the bed. Go get in the bed. Get in the bed now. Go in there now. Try to let you be outside. So, the trap has been engaged. Now that you know what the rap trap is, let's talk about why there's no reason to be in an uproar or to be extremely sad about this shit. Because it's just like, hey man, if I, I'm telling you now, if I got to get up now, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Get in the fucking bed. Get in the goddamn bed. Shut the fuck up. Excuse me. <clears throat> Every rapper is going to meet one of these ends. If they're rapping about, listen to them, I'm finna tell you something. There was a rapper, I saw an interview of a rapper in Memphis. Just some nobody ass rapper. But that's what I watch though. Just all day long, all I watch is underground, just local rappers all day long. Um, the rapper said the reason why he jumped off the porch, the reason why he started selling dope was because of Gucci. Gucci Mane influenced him so much that 
he started selling dope. He jumped off the porch, started toting iron, all this shit because of Gucci Mane. You ask Gucci Mane if that is what he intended to do. Just through his music. What do you think he would say? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. You get into the music shit, you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, just make some money. Like, you know what I'm saying, just trying to come up, flex a little bit, get some holes. But this is not a play play thing. And because we don't treat it, because we don't res give it the proper respect that it deserves, this is how the Great Depression started. The Great Depression is these nothing ass rappers that we get. Um, Bad Baby, Lil Xan, Trippy Red, Lil Pump, Takai 6 9 The reason why we got these type of rappers is because Jesus said, I'm a real nigga and I don't like rappers. Plies came behind him and said, I ain't no rap nigga. And at that point, it made it uncool to be talented at rapping. Rapping then became who is actually living this shit. And at that very fucking point, at that very fucking point, This game became the devil's home. The devil now lives here because now the more gangster, quote unquote, you are, the more praise you get. If niggas found out that you are not really about the shit that you talk about in your music, they no longer fuck with you. If you don't have a dirty record, niggas not going to fuck with you. Dirty record, I mean like actually been in jail, feds and all this shit like that. You been it long, you actually do the shit you talk about and it's documented. But at that very point, why in the fuck are we what are we mourning then? What are we sad about? Young greatness just got killed outside of IHOP. They took this call. Ain't that what we rap about? Catch a nigga slipping and, and take it? If a nigga don't live what he say, then we don't fuck with him. So every day, all day long, niggas talk about having a Draco, whipping work, killing niggas, robbing niggas. I'm going to hit whoever outside. Since when is robbing niggas? I'm saying it again. Since when is robbing a nigga not being cool? And I just, this, 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 this is what I'm saying to you. What's going on? Do you like gangster music or not? Cause niggas is not just listening to this music. Oh, I just like the fucking, I just like the sound of it, man. Niggas is living this shit, man. Niggas change their life because of this shit. This music ain't no game. This shit is powerful. It makes people do shit. You listen to this song when you want to do this. You listen to this song when you want to do that. This music has all type of essences and, and spirits on top of it. So, are you a fan of gangster rap music or aren't you? The reason why I say that every rapper that dies is a step in the right direction is because this is the only time you motherfuckers will even pay attention to a nigga being killed by another nigga. The only time other than this that a nigga's death gets any attention from any fucking body is when it's taken by a white person. And that's not how we dying every day. That's not why we going to funerals week after week, day after day. It's not the fucking white dude that gets all publicized. Oh my God. And the reason why we jump up and down about it is because it's far and in between. But this shit here is as fucking frequent as a nigga taking a shit. But niggas don't look at this shit. Like, niggas get shot and killed every fucking day in hood USA. 
Your hood, my hood, they hood. Niggas die. Your hood ain't hitting on shit if niggas don't die. If you can't brag on your murder rate, your hood ain't shit. You ain't got shit going. You live in the suburbs. Nigga, you a fuck nigga if you from there. If where you from ain't got no murder rate that's been on top, you a fuck nigga. We applaud gangsters, not regular everyday citizens. So, what I'm saying is, if it's gangster, then let it be fucking gangster. Kill or be killed. Is you a gangster or a fucking rapper? If niggas is listening to your music while they killing niggas, if niggas is listening to your music after they murk a nigga, why they selling dope, killing the goddamn environment? Doing the white man work? Then you a demon too, nigga. And death gonna come like that. It's somebody mama crying every day at a fucking funeral. But you don't give a motherfuck unless the nigga who died made a goddamn song. And I say that's bullshit. I say let's do this shit every time a nigga die. No matter who the fuck he was. If you gonna call for uh, stop the violence. Only when a fucking rapper die. Then a rapper need to die every motherfucking day. This nigga went to a goddamn funeral. He knew what it was. Ain't that fucked up? He knew what it was. I watched his interview and shit like that. And uh, his interview said, nigga ain't gonna run me out of my city. Nigga, shit, I, I'm, I'm a man. I don't, feel, I don't feel no man but God. But this nigga didn't live in New Orleans. This nigga lived in Atlanta and Houston because he knew the dangers of being where the fuck you from after gaining success. Success ain't nothing but a fucking bullseye. Nobody wants to do you like that. There is no more honest, good people that will come into your life after that curse has been placed on your head. From that point forward, everybody that comes at you is going to have some type of fucking agenda. Whether that's to take your freedom, take your life, or take your fucking money. It's going to be an agenda. It's on that day that you stop living. And just like really just surviving. Every day that you stay alive and stay with some money and stay free, you just survived. You know how stressful that is? See, I, I got, I, I'm talking to my niggas who've been on the run. You know what I'm saying? My niggas who've been on the run understand what it's like to be on the run. You, like, you understand why niggas say, I just got tired of running. Like, if you ain't never been on the run, if you if you ain't never been in this system, you, you don't, you wouldn't understand, like, what that's like. You know what I'm saying? Every time you get in the car, you're in the rear view. You can't, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what freedom is really because it's just another day that you didn't go to jail. You're not free. It's just another day that they didn't catch you. And this is the life we promoting them. Niggas try they damnedest. Niggas try with everything that they have to get the fuck away from that situation. And then get right in the studio and say, I ain't going to leave this bitch for nothing. Get right on the interview and say, I ain't going to leave this bitch for nothing. I ain't scared of nobody. We're going to trap this bitch out. Nigga trying with everything that he has not to go back to selling dope. Or to stop selling dope. But get right in that studio and say, I love the trap. Kill these niggas, dog. Kill these niggas. They already dead. You know what I'm saying? These, I'm saying, these niggas already dead. Let's save the motherfucking children. Because that's who, that, that's the only motherfuckers that have that type of mind. That That's the only, like, those are the only minds that are that impressionable. You know what I'm saying? To actually believe what these niggas are saying. You love the trap, but you in the studio every fucking day. That's who they're hypnotizing. That's whose mind is being corrupted. That's whose life they're changing. 
any fucking rapper that will go in the studio and straight the fuck up and down glorify something that he's horrified of. And he, I go to jail again. I don't give a fuck. That's how these niggas talk. Let me get off there. Let me let me stop because I'm going to go too far. The third thing is for, listen, any rapper that dies in his hometown from this point forward, there's no mourning. You're going to die. You're going to die in your hometown. It's, if I'm just giving you, like, words, all right, you're going to die at home. The people at home do not think that you're putting them on. The people at home do not feel like you ripping for them. They feel like you flexing on them. You done got success, and now you the one, like, you not in three states over. You, like, you right here. So, when your baby mama look at his video, like, she not looking at no nigga... Like Lil Wayne around there, she looking at a nigga that might be right down the street or she might bump into at the stove. And you can't even slap the remote out of hand because you don't want to look like a hater. But you going to work every day, nine to five. You at the trap selling three for tens. Can't get over a thousand dollars for some reason. But you doing it for your family. Your bitch love to see him on TV and your kids know all this song. They go crazy when they see him in the mall. How many times that gonna happen for you just for for a hatred getting that nigga belly that's so fucking deep that he wanna see you dead no matter what the fuck it take? Even if it means his freedom. You out here playing with these people's lives and because you're not giving this game the respect that it deserves, you're gonna find out the hard way. Play hard, play gangster. And stay in your hometown and brag about it. And when you get murked, it shouldn't be no motherfucking sad song. Because at this point in time, you're in more danger than a soldier in Iraq. In Iraq, you can pretty much tell who the enemy is. My nigga, you don't know what fucking direction it might come from. The cousin that you didn't get that $100 to... The bitch that asked for fifty dollars, your homeboy that said his lights finna get cut off. At this point in time, you are enemy USA. Everything is on you. If you don't want to leave, you gangster like that, then be a gangster. Gangsters die. Gangsters don't live forever; they die, and they don't die of old age. And, and that, that's a rap verse. That's a rap verse. Motherfuckers say, uh, gangsters don't die. They go to, they get fed and move to Miami. That's, that's rap shit, dog. Gangsters die. Brutal deaths. What happened to Young Greatness, that's a gangster death. He went out of blazing glory. Like, that's how you're supposed to die. You're supposed to get shot. What you surprised about? So, let that be known. Why you out this motherfucker thinking that you putting on and it's just, they don't love you. They planning, plotting, trying to find a way to get you the fuck out of there. Nigga ain't got to tell you to go look at Boosie interview for you to understand that niggas do not like you, my nigga. And the motherfuckers that signed you will do better numbers once you die or go to prison. And they ain't going to give a goddamn dime to your mama now. Nigga. Now I'm going to do a, a, a secondary video of once we find out who the killers is and shit like that. But for right now, nigga, get it how you live. Big Facts Podcast, Elvin Seiko. Hit the PayPal. See you in a minute. Love.